Does it feel like right now there isn't a front runner to win the Heisman Trophy? What if I were to tell you that we could end this narrative by Sunday morning? If you're brand new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, Texas, and I talk college football. I talk NFL, I talk MLB, I talk NHL, I talk NBA, but I love talking college football. If this is the type of content you enjoy, this is the channel made for you. So hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, tell me who is your front runner to win this year's Heisman Trophy, tell your friends, your family, your pastor, your enemies, your mortal foes, anybody who's drunk in a Walmart parking lot on Saturdays as you're getting ready for game day about this channel, because if we get to 1,000 subscribers by November 15th, I'll shave my head live on air, Lex Luthor style. We are going live later today. We have shows on Thursdays and we have shows on Fridays. So you're not going to want to miss out. Hit the subscribe button down below and let's talk college football. College football does not have front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Every single week we have somebody new reigning supreme, whether it would be Caleb Williams or then you throw in a Dylan Gabriel from his performance against Texas in the Cotton Bowl. And then you throw in Michael Penix Jr. during his performance over Oregon. And now Oregon looks really good. And now you have Bo Nix leading the charge. You can end the narrative on Sunday morning. You really could. And I don't think that it guarantees this player a spot as the top top guy. What it does is it makes you the front runner. And I think if you get this win and you get this dub, LSU's Jaden Daniels is running away with the award. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to get the award. There still is a lot of controversy that would come along with this. There are still multiple games ahead to where anybody can step up and deliver a clutch performance and prove to the world, I belong in this conversation, including, and I can't believe I'm saying this because it feels wrong that we're keeping him out, Marvin Harrison Jr., the guy is on pace to finish with better numbers than he had last season, not to mention he also would break a school record with the most 100 receiving yard games in Ohio State history. So there's a lot writing on this season. But this is by far the biggest testament and the biggest test for LSU on Saturday when they go travel to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and they take on Alabama. The Crimson Tide does not lose at home. And I know, okay, well, they lost to Texas. Cool story, bro. Do you know how many times they've lost underneath Nick Saban in the house that Bryant built? Eight times? I don't even know if it's eight. I think it might be seven, if I'm not mistaken. They don't lose at home. It just doesn't happen that way. And the reason is because of how well constructed this team is and how prepared they are in practice. I'll give you a quick story. When I was at Alabama, we would go to practice every day. And we were told you cannot record anything past a certain number. There was buildings. There were several apartment complexes that were right next to the practice facility. And they were told, if you live here, you are not allowed on your balcony from this time to this time. And someone got evicted because Nick Saban caught them on their balcony. We weren't taping anything, but they broke contract. That's the level of commitment that is in Tuscaloosa for Saturdays. And they do it for every game, but they precisely do it for home games. And so an LSU team that still controls its destiny, it's slim because if you would have to have Texas A&M find a way to beat Ole Miss or Georgia find a way to beat Ole Miss and probably lose another game and you would have Alabama lose a game. But there still is a pathway for LSU to represent the West in Atlanta. But it only starts and it ends right now if you beat the Crimson Tide. And you can. On paper, without question, you can beat Alabama. This is one of the best passing attacks in the country. And all attention turns to Malik Neighbors. And, and well, it should. Malik Neighbors is a stud of a wide receiver. But they also have three really good number two and number three options. Kyron Lacey is averaging 19.3 yards per play. Brian Thomas Jr. actually leads the team in receiving touchdowns with 11, and he's averaging 17.4 yards per, ca uh, per catch. You have Mason Taylor at tight end, and you also have a really good Chris Hilton, and then Logan Diggs out of the backfield. Plus, you have Josh Williams, another very good player. But it starts and ends, of course, with Jaden Daniels. It all starts and ends with, with Jaden Daniels. He's one of the best passers when it comes to completion percentage. He ranks top 20. 
He's number four, if I'm not mistaken, in passing yards. Only Michael Penix Jr., uh, Shadur Sanders, if I'm not mistaken, and Caleb Williams have more passing yards than him. And I might even be wrong on that one. I think, actually, no, I, I am right. Never mind. Uh, he's number two in passing touchdowns. Only Caleb Williams, I think, has more. And I think that they're tied, if I'm not mistaken. And he leads the country in passer rating. The guy's a stud. He has one of the best deep balls in college football. He's mobile. He's great when it comes to the utilization of his legs. And he finds ways to manipulate defenses into making mental mistakes. This is exactly what you're looking for in terms of best player in college football mantra. Now, I'm still a believer in Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. And I believe at this point, after what Bo Nix did against Utah, in Rice Cycle Stadium, which another place you don't just walk in and win. You either are a great team. You're either a great team that finds a way to dismantle and suck the living soul out of a program like Utah. Or, and this is usually what happens, you lose that game. And Bo Nix had a phenomenal showcase. Not to mention, I think that you have to include J.J. McCarthy if he continues to play at a certain standard. But those numbers have got to go up a little bit more. Dylan Gabriel still rushed for three touchdowns against Kansas, so you can't entirely rule him out either. But I think right now, when you look, going into the belly of the beast of the SEC West, going into a hostile atmosphere where revenge is the only thing being served in Tuscaloosa this week, there is only a conversation about what happened last year in Baton Rouge and how Alabama got complacent and how Alabama didn't play up to its standard, and they barely lost the game. But hell, if we played up to our nation and our standard, we would have won by 10. And that's kind of the inclination that's going around right now when it comes to Tuscaloosa. Jane Daniels walks in there, and he has a performance of a lifetime. I don't know who's catching him. Because not only would you become one of the only handful of teams in college football history, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's two. So you'd be the third team to ever beat Nick Saban back-to-back. You also now would put yourself firmly in the number two slot and you would be begging and praying that Georgia finds a way to beat Ole Miss or you find a way to beat Florida and they just corral themselves. Like that's what you're hoping for at this point. And it's plausible. It very much is plausible. Everyone wants to say that this is a bad year for LSU. No, it's not really. It's a year where they're probably not going to the college football playoff, but 10 and two is on the docket. An SEC title still remains at all time, and that's because of who is running the show under center. Jaden Daniels has been one of, if not the best comeback stories in college football. People wrote him off when he was at Arizona State. Now he's looking like a more and more the best quarterback and the most consistent quarterback in college football this season. Doesn't mean he's the best, because if I think that when you look at talent perspective only, we all know who's number one. But the consistency... The team chemistry, the ability to win with multiple receivers and not just trust one guy, plus his deep ball accuracy, and I might also throw in his manipulation with his legs makes him such a dynamic athlete. You can't count him out. If Jaden Daniels throws for over 300 yards and four touchdowns, I'm not sure that there's even a close second when it comes to the Heisman Trophy race. This could be the weekend where we solidify who is the front runner all the way through November. And best of luck to those trying to play catch up with number five in Baton Rouge. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.